Hey guys, Winter Wolf here. I just wanted to give you a heads up for tonight's show. King Z and I will not be doing the Winter's Wrath Summer Scorn uh, type of show this week for Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 7, The Spies. It was a longer episode and we had a lot of things to say about it. So this is kind of a return to form how we did our Andor reviews for those of you that have been around since the beginning. So buckle up, grab a couple of drinks, grab a snack, grab what you need. Don't drink and drive if you're doing that. I should have chosen my words a little bit more carefully. Um, but yeah, check us out. This one's this one's a little bit different than we've done for The Mandalorian this year. Uh, stick around. Welcome back to Winter Wolf's Den, guys. King Z back from his location job last week. Winter Wolf on this side of the desk here. There he is. He's back. Uh, I am hatless, as you can see, because it finally is in the 70s up here, and I can't justify wearing the uh, the beanie, the snow cap, the rag, whatever. Can't do it, dude. I'm sweating balls down here in the uh, in, in the Winter Wolf's Den. But, uh, welcome back, and I'm glad you're here this week, because I think this episode of The Mandalorian Season 3 is different obviously than last week it's probably a bit more of a crowd pleaser to most people i'm guessing but i think there's a lot to unpack with it and i think that something you just said i don't know if it'll make it into our edit of the show i think there's some things that tie in from this week to some of the announcements most recently made out of lucas films about the state of the franchise and where it's going i don't know if you feel the same way about that but we'll definitely cut into some uh we'll cut into everything we can cut into um and you know as we have this little conversation here um you just watched the episode you want me to do a synopsis while you kind of let everything gel still because I, I i watched it twice i just watched about half of it while you were watching it just to bring myself back up to speed on some uh, criticisms that i had <clears throat> yeah i just got um i just got done watching it i think dude um i got i got some stuff just for the technical side of it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh mostly that would. it's a f it's a 45 minute episode even though it's advertised as 52 you have to take out 527 for the end credits and one Oof. 150 cents for the opening yeah. credits part it's just how they roll which is sad and i think that'll tie into uh, some of the things i have to say now that we're is we have, what do we have one more two more we have nine here total? one more that but th that's it episode is the final episode and it's called the mandalorian you're kidding the, the, this was the pen ultimate that explains why it was probably the way it was with you know in terms of overall you know punching kind of resolutions to certain characters ends which reminds me king z tell the good people it's a spoiler alert run the siren do the thing right around here Woo, yeah we know um so <laughs> having said that um so just a quick synopsis for the episode um so the the bo Tandalorian show is, is well underway She's on the mission to retake Mandalore. She's reunited ex-tribes of folks. They're, they do a brief pit stop on Navarro to get together. And then they're off to the races at Mandalore where they're going to touch down. And their goal was to find the Great Forge and kind of reinstitute a, a new settlement centered there. Then, you know, expand outward, you know, as they as time goes on. But of course, it all hits the fan when they get there. And surprise! God, Moff Gideon's hidden base has been there the whole time. It was Agatha all along and all kinds of crap that happens after that. And I'm sure you can tell by my tone that, you know, I might not have been too, too impressed with that. But that's the synopsis anyway. It ends on, on a bit of a down note, which I did like. Uh, kind of like Empire, you know, they, they lose the group. We'll talk about they lose one of their kind of fan favorite uh, characters along the way. Um, Din gets captured and separated from Baby Yoda, who makes yet another pointless appearance in this episode and i have some stuff to say about that based on his new no. uh his new whip his new uh his new wheels his, his new get around uh, what are the kids calling cars these days do you guys even drive anymore or are you guys just hanging out at home and doing the social media thing I and mean, maybe driving's not a big deal who knows um so yeah it ends on kind of a bummer and it, it kind of and it ends on moff gideon basically after capturing and you know dealing with a bunch of mandalorian sending his tie fleet up to get uh, Bo-Katan's armada that's more or less defenseless versus the amount of TIE fighters that I saw down there. And you know I like my TIE fighters and interceptors. So, so yeah, that's the, that's the synopsis there, dude. Just give me give me an initial impression right quick because you, you said you, you... I know you, you had to have liked it more than last week. There's no chance that you didn't. It wasn't stupid. I mean, it, so I mean, it was I stupid, know, but it wasn't Lizzo stupid. I know I'm going to mess up his name. <laughs> I got you. But... Uh, Jacarno. Yeah, yeah, stop Esposado. right there. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Juan Carlo Esposito. <laughs> Juan Carlo Esposito. Every time. <laughs> just call him Gus Spring. 
<laughs> just call him Goss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by far the yeah. greatest actor yeah. in this series, yeah. and he's been in one episode. Yep. Dude, Wasted. his delivery. Wasted. But I believe just bringing him in. Yeah. Cash the episode. Uh, up the whole game of the whole series and just having yeah. him there because the one thing that we've been missing this whole series is a big bad yep. you had you had the hints of him but there's nothing that's been the driving factor like who we're going to who are we going to be yeah there's a little tension here are we going to get back together are we not going to get back together am I going to steal my fleet badges it yeah. just it's all been like stupid side quest Season yeah. three is stupid side quest, yeah. and now the big bad's back in the picture, and it raised the level of the show automatically yeah. back up. And then his delivery, like his whole performance in the scene where he's talking with all the other yeah, remnants of the Empire. Yeah. You have to think, when he's shooting that scene, he's the only one in that room. Oh yeah, 100%. 100%. And he still has to deliver that type <clears throat> of performance with nobody around him. Yeah. It just shows the level of commitment to his talent that he has yeah. yeah for sure i think there's there's no there's no doubt in my mind that he's the best part of the, the show he's the best part of this season so far just based on the caliber of acting that he brings to the table but unfortunately i feel like it, it brings me back to things that i said i think as early as probably episode two or three like how has this just not been the show why was there only you know two or three cryptic references to this character and then the one big end of episode, you know, stinger from episode five, where we realize he's been busted out of, you know, the um, the New Republic shuttle. And there was some question, you know, oh, there was traces of Beskar. Oh, snap. Was it a Mandalorian group? Well, no, it's it's his big reveal, his new new um, new wave of dark trooper armor. It was basically just his boys broke him out. You know, yeah. But I would have liked to have seen some of the planning for that. We could have seen him in, in the. We could have seen him in the Republic version of the. Um, the I'm gonna call it the Waterworld Jail from Andor. You know what I mean? Like he was doing time somewhere. Show me, show me him working with an Imperial mole in the prison that gets the message to the chick that killed Doctor Pershing and the mind scrambling thing device. You know, two weeks before that, there were just there's just things I wanted to see. And we didn't do that so we could have stupid episodes of Monster Hunter Rise, like Tatooine edition. I know they're not on Tatooine, but you get my point. It's like so you said, you have, bro, side quests everywhere for days. For so days. You had, um, you had monster hunting. You had rebirthing. Yeah. You had CSI. Yep. You yep. had uh, Save the Kid from the Bird. Yeah. Monster Hunter 2. And it is, yeah. And then you had uh, Pirates week 1. <laughs> pirates. You had Pirates, so you had Pirates See, of the Caribbean. And did you even pick up on that the, they tried to even connect that to this week where the the I, and I don't remember her name, the 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 trader's name from TK2577. Whatever her whoever I, I was going to use the actress's name just if pro actor actress whatever she is. I think she she checks that box. So I don't want to offend anybody today. I'm in a decent and generous mood. Um She's like, oh, the pirates have had some trouble. Well, why? Why? The pirates were involved. They're, they're imperial privateers. They were hired to put pressure on Navarro or something. Like, Din surprised them in episode one when he showed up and laid the smack down on them. And then he surprised them again when he showed up in episode whatever and really laid the smack down on them. They weren't a part of any imperial grand plan. I just thought it was just kind of dumb. Um, but And, and that's... that's, or that's side stuff away from Gideon. I mean, dude, I love the performance that the, the shadow council, as they called it was a great scene where he kind of, it, it had shades of Andor, which I enjoyed where he kind of like laid some weight down where he's put, put, you know, I'm looking for a change in leadership because you guys have all the resources and we don't, but we're getting by and we're all on the same team. And, blah, 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 blah. and you know, he kind of called out the whole, where's Thrawn nonsense. You keep saying that shit. Where is he? I don't see him. Maybe we need a new ch change in leadership. And, Right away, you know, the other two, three, four, you know, out of the six or seven people that were assembled there were all kind of on board with that. So he's definitely, he's a yeah. power player, and I liked it. I, I thought that was pretty slap, and I did there enjoy it. There was a toss that. to Andor in this as well. There were a they, couple, I where, thought. Where uh, Bogotan was talking about the ISB and like yep. how they said that if you surrender, we'll spare your village, and mm -hmm. then Moff Gideon's like, that ain't going to happen. Yep. Put a pin in that line of dialogue because I, I have something on that. 
The two connections that I noticed uh, right away, uh, just to Star Wars at large, and you talk about connection to Andor, one of the uh, the older gentleman in that scene that was kind of leading the Shadow Council before Gideon showed up, his last name was Pelion. Was that not one of the I ISB's names that kept coming up on, on Andor? I think that was, was that not the fat guy who was all concerned about his suit when his wife and son were going to get taken hostage when they began yeah. the heist? I believe it was Pelion. So, I mean, they recycled that name. And they also recycled Hux. That was the younger guy that was the one that was going to do the requisition of the um, the Praetorian Guards and the extra TIE Bombers. The younger one with the British accent. Uh, can't be yeah, obviously the, the same the Hux. The Covenant, right. Can't be the same guy as that was in the sequel trilogy. It's probably a... But again, it, it's a connection to it, possibly, that they, they used the same name. Like, he may be... The sequel trilogy, Hux, may be a direct descendant of this guy. Their, their demeanor was about the same. Kind of ratty, kind of weaselly, kind of little snarky and kind of buttoned up, kind of. You'll get your guard. Uh, you know, like, it, it, he just kind of reminded me of Hux. I could see There's that. also a throw to... Um the cloning of Jedi. Yep. You said mm -hmm. the cloners and the Jedi. Yep. Oh, dude, definitely. So. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that was it, one of the things I wanted to mention in the larger context of just, uh, this show is a cartoon. We, we've already agreed on that. Um, the older gentleman, I believe that was Pelion, specifically said, that's what we have Operation Necromancer for. And yep. I almost threw up in my living room because I'm like, motherfucker. Like, we're basically just now saying at this point, we're making up all the possible excuses and giving all the latitude for the idiocy that was Rise of Skywalker that we could throw at the wall and make stick that would be like, oh no, we knew that shit all along, man. What are you talking about? See, it was all set up back when Moff Gideon did the illegal cloning thing that nobody knew about. It was Project Necromancer. Bah, 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 bah. No, no, cut it off. That was the point. Like, Dave and John, you were supposed to restore the Force, not destroy it. You were the chosen ones. This this is their moment. This is this this episode is their fall into darkness for me. It is. It's been it's, a crap season, but this specifically laying these their hooks of the sequel trilogy into this show once and for all. Dude, fuck this show. They spent too much they spent too <clears throat> much money in the sequel trilogy yeah, yeah. to not tie it together. And they needed yeah. something to do it, and this show had to take the fall. Yeah, dude, which is Somebody too, which is too effing bad. Bullet. Dude, which is too effing bad. Imagine buying, imagine buying Lucasfilm <clears> for four billion dollars <throat> and having like five kicks at the can to make your money back and not getting it done. Imagine that. Can you imagine running your business so stupidly? Like, and and it, that that those are objective numbers. That's not me uh, hating on sequel trilogy for its quality. That's me just pointing out, hey, the sell price for Lucasfilms was like four point oh one billion, and they've barely cleared that combined from the three trilogy movies solo and everything else that they've thrown together. It's a shit, it's a shit show, man. Shit show. Well, you do know why Lucas sold in 1999, don't you? That's when he sold star Wars 1999. But did he not recover it and sell it to Disney in 2012? Is that not the, no, he's, he, no, he sold it in 1999 to Disney. I didn't know. Got no idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, then you know what they did. Oh, no, it, no, you're right. It was 2011. It was 2011. Yeah, yeah. It was in the 90s because, you know, uh, yeah. Phantom Menace didn't even come out until I was in college, and he was still very much on board with um, yeah, he was doing the yeah. prequels. <clears throat> it was uh, tw 2011 yeah. that he sold it to Disney. And you know why? No, nah, I don't remember. He is I'm sure it's going to piss me off. <laughs> he was a deep believer that 2012 was going to be the end of the world. Oh, he, that's right. He was one of those guys. And good for him. He made his four billion. I mean, fine. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate on him for that. You he know, had a year like, to spend it in his <laughs> eyes. Knock yourself out. I mean, the merchandising alone from the toys from the prequel trilogy was like a two billion dollar sale to Mattel or, or whoever made the uh, the Hasbro. For that. Hasbro back in the day. But back to the back to the show. Before I go all the way down the rabbit hole with the uh, Star Wars celebration announcements, and we are definitely going to talk about some of that stuff today because we're off the uh we're off the three and three format for this episode for sure um yeah dude I'll, I'll i'll stick somewhat with that format just so i can keep my thoughts organized and and not be too far over the place but one of the things i really did not like about this week ties into one of your common complaints i think almost every episode so far this season is the dialogue is trash dude trash it's trash it's 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 it's, it's, it's been first, trash it's day dude, one dude tell me it's not like they 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 threw down a first draft for the dialogue and then never went back never never went back because it, dude it's clunky it's stupid it's it's filled with as many proper nouns like night of a thousand tears and 
And you know, the, just as many student project necromancer, they, they pack all these things in because they, I feel like they think they're kind of like dialogue high points that like will remember those things and think, oh yeah, it had that great thing, even though it sounds like something from Warcraft. And it's like, I, no, it, it's just bad. It's bad every time Bo-Katan talks for 45 straight seconds. And I like well, Katie yeah. Sackhoff, but the dialogue is trash. Well, she wasn't even that good at delivering her dialogue in Battlestar Galactica in the first. But, but no, no, no. But, of it. but but she has a, she, her character in Battlestar Galactica is a very. She's she's a good looking woman, number one. And that helps you buy the sexy, coy, femme fatale thing, even if the dialogue's not good. So she she was yeah. she was fine as Starbuck. I get no I mean, bad she, things to she, say about Starbuck. She got None. she got better at Starbuck as the series went on. Oh, and like I think most one, of the junior like actors on that show did. Yeah, the, it, like she went back to like episode one Starbuck in this whole oh yeah yeah it, it, this whole season completely wooden completely. She's like Casper Van Dien. No offense, Casper Van Dien. I love you, and Sleepy Hollow. The part that didn't make sense to me, and we talked about bad dialogue, is like she was there and she was talking about you talked about the uh, Night of a Thousand Tears or something mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that. And she mm -hmm. talked about like how she surrendered, and then, not even one minute later, she's like, "Mandalorian United can never Dude, be defeated." Thank you. Thank you. You just defeated. Dude. You just told Dude. the story. Dude, that's the Dude, that was like that was my second extension of this point. Was that if I had a criticism, a main like global level criticism of this episode, is it's say one thing and then walk it back a minute later, right? To to your point, like what you just said. Remember the part where the two dipshit Mandalorians are fighting over the chess game. Right, and Din yeah. says, "Hey, you think I should step in?" And you know, and and of course, Bo Katan goes, "No, no, you can't do that shit. No one else can. They have to settle it themselves." Right? Well, who the fuck steps in? Of course, baby fucking Yoda in the stupid IG12 suit, which is a whole nother level of. So we weren't selling as many baby carriages. We needed to put them in a robot and hope that that got some little boys to buy this shit over the summer and ask for it for Christmas. I'm cynical as fuck on that point. The, the baby Yoda does not need to, you can have Din this season. Baby Yoda did not need to be here for anything. Right. But my point yeah. to that, my point to that scene was, so Bo-Katan tells Din, don't step in. They have to fight it out. Like they, there's rules to these kind of duels. You know, it's either it's fight or submit. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it is. Nobody can interrupt. It has to be a fair fight. You know what I mean? And then baby Yoda steps in with the droid and just separates these two dudes with like no force power, no. just the power, just the power of the droids. And then she says, you've, you've taught your foundling well. And he goes, well, he didn't learn that shit from me. So it's, it's already like number one, Din's downplaying himself. And he does it again later with the, I'll, I'll always serve you lady Kree's nonsense. But like, he, not only did he not take the compliment, he says he didn't learn it from me. And then she's saying like two seconds before that, nobody can intervene. Well, baby Yoda at this point is a fucking foundling for the covert. He, he, he's on a side. He belongs to one of the sides. So yeah. somebody did intervene. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I, I can't wrap my mind around the logical, like the, just the inconsistencies with these two. They're pros. I mean, John and Dave are pros. We love these guys. We would love to work for these guys or, you know, or, you know, mentor with these guys or whatever. They're great at what they do. In most cases, what happened to this show? Like, seriously, it's like, they ain't like a fucking dipshit fucking sandwich and asked for a second one. And I, I, I can't, I don't see how people are defending this anymore. Like it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's pretty to look at most times, but I mean, beyond that, it, it's like, do people really just not care if shit doesn't make sense? Is that really where we are? Cause I feel like when shit does make sense, it just does better across the board. Spider-Man No Way Home makes sense. Crazy across the board. Maverick makes sense. Crazy across the board. Last weekend, Super Mario set the entire global box up. Well, not the entire globe off, a uh, globe uh, global box office, but domestically set the box office on fire. Why? Because it made fucking sense. Like, but here, it's uniquely in Star Wars, almost because I mean, Marvel's bad, and I'm not going to go a week without mentioning how much I hate Marvel. They're bad, but most of their shit makes sense. Star Wars but no longer makes sense. And the thing with Marvel is that they're trying to dial it back now too, because they realized yeah. we we yep. messed up. And now yep. we're going to try to fix it for he dies, which is a, a right move. Mm -hmm. But let's see. Let, let's see how they do it, because it could be lip service. But let's see if they can prove it. Well, I, I hope uh, just as, as a quick sidebar to just the Marvel thing, since we're you know doing the longer conversation today anyway. Did you I don't know if you've seen the Captain Marvel 2 trailer. I haven't I haven't seen it yet myself. No. 
commentary the video to follow. Probably the Marvels. I'm still calling it Captain Marvel too because that was the OG title. Which again, between a title change and five pushbacks and the inclusion into a team movie, if if that doesn't tell you that the studio has no faith in the main Captain Marvel as like a central Avenger figure, I don't know what else to tell you guys. But that trailer, I'm being told, was the fastest Marvel trailer to 100,000 dislikes thus far. <laughs> and it, it only took them like 12 hours or something to get to that point. So, yeah, Marvel, hopefully you're paying attention. If you thought Ant-Man 3 was bad, buckle the fuck up for how bad that's going to bomb. That's a guarantee. But back on the, the, the Star Wars rant with the, with, with the, um, the Mandalorian. Um, so you get the Baby Yoda walking things back um, speech. There was another good one, too. You mentioned the whole... The uh, the thing with the what was the one you said that the, I don't want to repeat the one that Bo-Katan said. Oh yeah, they, we're we're stronger yeah. together. That that whole thing. Yeah, us is like she talked about We've, how she surrendered and when defeat was inevitable. And yeah, then she's yeah. like a, a Mandalorian together could never yeah, be defeated. Never been defeated except you were just defeated. <laughs> like that was the point. You had to you had to do the surrender thing because you had gotten curb stomped nearly into oblivion already. It's it's just one dumbass thing after another, man. And I, I, like another one just for like inconsistency. And I get this is just this is literal plot armor. The the last scene where you get the shootout between the Mandalorians and the upgraded Iron Man, Stormtrooper, Jet Trooper, Beskar, Dark Troopers, but they're in white and not black. I don't know, like what the fuck ever. Um, it's funny how Beskar is perfectly blaster proof until it's not. <laughs> and then when we need you to take a barrage of blaster fire, you can. And then when we need you to take a glancing shot off the leg, you're just down and like out of the fight completely. And that shit went on for like eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Eight <clears throat> minutes. Well, I... <laughs> to, to try to defend this and you stop it don't stop it can't say it loses <laughs> intensity the further it goes so far shots wouldn't hurt as bad as close up uh, shots yeah but also, they were they basically fighting hand to hand between. dude they were fighting hand to hand in the same scene and still shooting i call i call nonsense on your defense i just call it it's just like and i get it it's literal plot armor but it's just funny to watch that all play out like because they because the characters reference it in world where like they exchange some fire and one of the i think it was um axe woves or wovez or whatever his name is like the the junior mandalorian that gave up the fleet back to Bo-Katan. he's like ah they got beskar armor and I'm like all right <laughs> like here we go and all of a sudden so both sides have beskar we're just reflecting laser or blaster shots off of each other until they get up close and the mandalorians go into like you know, John Wick mode with a couple of like vibro blades, which were cool. I, I do have a couple of good visuals to point out this. Like, matter of fact, let's stop talking about bad shit. What did you like visually about this episode this week? Because I'm sure you found a couple of visually. Things. I really yeah. liked when they came in to drop off the scouting party, and you got to see the down, yep. the down. Vi- I know you're going to say that. Uh, Mandalore, yep. that was awesome. Then the yep. drop in yep. was perfect. Because like, you dropped, you locked the drop. Uh, you liked the drop before when the yeah. uh, when they defeated the pirates. That's cool shit. What else you like? Um, let's see. Actually, that big creature they fought, yep. which brought up to one other point. I'm like, Mandalorian, Mandalorians need to find a new place to live, generally. Because every yep. time, no matter where they live, some <laughs> big Monster creature Hunter. wants to want to eat them. <laughs> they do Monster Hunter, man. Every, every week. Come on, man. And, and the thing is, man, it'd be one thing if they were, like, you know, qualified to kill these things. But they suck at, at monster slaying. Like, they're just bad. Like, we There's need to get a bunch of 14-year-olds that have, like, 100%ed Monster Hunter Rise. And like have them come in to kill these things. I I, I don't die, but you know I did like um I, I did like Mandalorian Godzilla as well. I thought that was an interesting effect because I, I like the glassed surface of Mandalore is like yeah. the coolest representation of glass I've seen since since Halo. I do like how yeah. the Covenant absolutely nuked, you know, uh, the sites that they nuked and whatnot in the colonies. So I thought that was pretty good. Like I mentioned before, the um the vibro blade that Paz has, I love the vibro blade. I liked it when they yeah, showed when, up at the when end. They were fi- when they were, or when they were doing the handheld fighting on the um, yep. the land the land ship. Yep, that's that's when he pulled it out in the first place, and then the uh, the, yeah. the second go is when he pulled it out at the end for his big showdown, which was okay. Yeah. I like the Praetorian Guard uh, motif with you know the red. Every time they were moving before and after combat, it was like half slow mo, kind of ominous with like the chorus behind them. So I'm like, that's good, mm-hmm. and it kind of that's it's not a direct sequel trilogy tie in, but it, it kind of just it reminded me of the Knights of Ren. And how basically they amounted to nothing in three movies. And I'm like, oh, hopefully they do something cool with these three 
at least in the last episode. But then it made me think again, like had Moff Gideon been an active part of this show since like episode three or four, if they were the ones that had broken him out, we could have seen them do some really intimidating Praetorian guard kind of shit. But yeah. we know they're probably just going to end up in a room with Moff Gideon and Din will be there and Bo-Katan will be there and I don't know, IG-88, Baby Yoda IG-88 will do some shit. Yes. That'll be three on three. And that'll be it. And it'll suck. So, I mean, I'm not going to get too excited. But I did like the visual of their weapons, their the red outfit and shit like that. That was pretty cool. Um, any I, other unique standouts? Uh, I did like his <clears throat> last stand. It was like he was going for the high score. She's like, come yeah, on, yeah. let's go. I was like, no, man, I'm almost at the high score. You're right, right. <laughs> I got one more guy. <laughs> Except you don't have one more guy. <laughs> um, I like that. It, it be, it's beyond that visual, I like that he just ran the heavy blaster into overheating. That was a mm. badass visual. It just starts glowing, right? Yeah. He runs it out of ammo or he burns it out. And what's he do? He just unhooks it, starts clubbing bitches. I'm like, yep, okay. All right, not bad. And then but again, people off the edge, straight spired and dude. People. Oh, dude, he dude, he was he was like a gorilla unleashed. He's doing like the double chest pound on the ground on a couple of them. I'm like, all right, big man's got some feelings. He's got to get out. He's going through it. <laughs> but it gets stupid. It always gets stupid. It's like once the thrill of the scene is over, and you go back and you think, is this the thing? Maybe people just don't do this, and I do, and you do, and other more critically thinking people, or I don't know. He didn't need to do that. The retreat was underway. He could have just backed his ass right into that door, still shooting. They could have made it through the door. The door yep, dude. Come, have it done down. Shoot the shoot the thing. I mean, how he's done like it all before. literally all he had to do was back up three feet and hit the same switch that he hit that cut off Bo-Katan from him and the hole in the in the previous blast door that that she had cut. So when you start thinking about that shit, I'm like, wow, dude, they really went with. It's like they they favored sizzle over steak, and I fucking hate that in all things. Like, you could have still given him that moment. It could have just come two seconds later. Like, if they cut through, the, if they make it through a door, you get back up topside, and, you know, you realize there's nowhere to go, and you're the guy that takes the bomb vest in and just thermal detonates 12 of them so everybody else can go. It was just, I, I just don't like it when it doesn't have to be a thing. Like, you know, like we have, we we run that clip every now and again, and, and we haven't used it in a while. The the soldier in Starship Troopers, he's mortally wounded as the bugs are surging to go after the rest of Casper Vindian's troop on their way out mm -hmm. of the cave. So he's the guy that ignites the bug grenade and just nukes himself to cut the bugs off from pursuing his guys. If he was upright and running, he was still running out of that cave and just shooting. You know what I mean? There's no way he just stands there with the grenade like do and just does it if he's you know still up on his feet. Paz could still have made it out of there holding the blast shield up and done his thing. You know, end rant on Paz. But um, I had, there was another visual. I can not remember what it was. It wasn't Baby Yoda and the IG thing because that's just dumb. I'm not going to talk about that again. Um, <clears throat> oh, the, the, the land ship itself. That was pretty cool. I didn't mind that. I thought like they're, they're cruising the surface of uh, Mandalore and as they, they pull up to a stop because, you know, this big ass, it's like, it almost reminded me of, Jabba's uh, sail barge, but it's it wasn't a hydro. It wasn't a um, hovercraft. That's what I was looking for. Like it's literally like it's on skids and it had like metallic sails that it was using mm -hmm. to like actually ride wind cars. So that was pretty cool. It looked, nice. it looked rusty as fuck. It looked like it was from Waterworld. You know what I mean? It looked like OG. Like it had yeah. been around and like salted and rusted for a while. So I was digging. I was digging that. Um, it wasn't without its merits for a couple of cool visuals. I'll tell you one of the other, I had two other stupid things from Mandalore, and then I got to let you get a word in edgewise, but I just needed to vent all this shit because I watched it twice. Um, so on that scene where, the, where the, the land ship is showing up, right, the Mandalorians all see it coming, right? Bo-Katan's looking at it. Everybody else is looking at it. So she flicks the radio mic and says, Night Owls, like she's calling out her squad, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they say, flanking left. They literally move three steps to the left. Three. Like, <laughs> not even enough to break the formation they're in. They moved three paces left and, like, didn't cover behind the boulder that was there. And I'm like, look at these tactics in play. No wonder they're a fighting force to be feared across the galaxy. Like, they moved three effing paces. Not like we went fucking far and we had an opportunity for... Cut. Three steps. All right? The other one, and this is hilarious. Just, I, I, I had to laugh at this one, right? So... They're underground. They get Imperial ambush. They get jumped. Paz says, hey, there's a hole in the ceiling. I'm going to lay down some cover so the guy that said, I I'll get back to the fleet and send reinforcements. All right? Now, 
So he jetpacks out and he's good. He gets up topside. What's he do then? They have no ship there. They were and orbitally he, and dropped radio in. radio coverage, the radio <laughs> can't go get through the ionic storm on the top. Right. So, like, where's he going? Where's he going? Did he fly all the way to the ship on his jetpack? Is, is, he, is he finding out that the, the jetpacks, which we know, have a range of about two miles? Because we saw that in Monster Hunter 2 when they were chasing the flying T-Rex thing, and literally all of them ran out of gas. All of them. All of them. So he was going to fly that thing orbitally from underground. Uh, dude, I, I see shit like that. I'm like, and I get, and again, I get what they were going for. It was Paz laying down cover for Axe. The two guys that had the fist fight earlier, that was supposed yep. to be the whole tribes coming together moment thing that we worked yep. together. We're but I'm like, a but common it's, enemy. Right. But it was fucking dumb <laughs> because once she flies out of the hole, they're counting the show is counting on your attention span, not being able to remember how they got there 10 minutes prior. And I'm like, well, I remember. Like, they, there's a fleet with, a, like, a light cruiser that had to use a drop ship that broke orbit, had them para drop in, and then went back because they were, like, that was it. Like, that, that, that was the point. Like, that was the job. They took on wounded from the land ship and brought yeah. them back to the fleet. There is no ship him on this like if you want if they had a drop ship that was still surface side like oh fuck i gotta get back to the ship and we gotta break the ionosphere like you said to be able to radio the fleet to send down what the other 15 fighters they have like okay i mean reinforcements are great when they get there in 80 seconds they're probably not great when they get there the next day because we know <laughs> on this show they like to take breaks like when they were doing the t-rex hunt right we're gonna go save yep. my kid but first a camp stuff a campfire song but first we need s'mores or we need s'mores we need story time we get a sleepover and you know like how do we eat dude, without our helmet? Dude, it's, dude, our right, dude, oh my god, it's just so fucking stupid. Which is too bad because it's like, it's kind of like, you know, like if you drew a picture to the best of your ability, right? And you waved it in front of me real quick and said, hey, yeah, it's, it's a picture of a Corvette or whatever. I'm like, dude, all right, that's probably pretty good. If you, get, if you get any average decent amount of talent, right? You, you, you could probably pass when it's a flash. But the minute you give it to me in my hands to look at and think about, and then maybe compare to something else that doesn't suck. And I'm like, oh dude, you know, maybe you're not as good an artist of Corvettes as I thought you were. You know, no offense, but maybe that's maybe that's a thing. And Andor if John is the <clears throat> is Andor ruined the show. Because I mean Andor, Andor like, ruined Star like Wars of writing Star Wars for sure. Yep. I mean, as far as as far as dialogue and, and, and and kind of like nuance story nuance storytelling goes, yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's it's and or a bust. And again, I say it's too effing bad that I think that shows viewership. After you lose the percentage that you were gonna lose because people, some people just don't want the slower pace, and that's fine. You, I mean, you don't have to. I don't want the Saturday morning cartoon thing anymore. You're, so you're always gonna lose a percentage of of viewers that have different tastes and preferences. That's to be expected. But I think mm -hmm. that Andor, we've said this before throughout our run of that show, I think Andor having come right off the heels of, um, they were right after Boba Fett. Were they after Boba Fett or Kenobi? Kenobi. They were after, I think, Kenobi, right. And Kenobi was right, which was right, literally right after the Fett. They were already 0 for 2 in a lot of people's minds. So a lot of people with limited time aren't going to check in on, on, a, on an unknown of unknowns. The, I mean, Pete Andor's only reference point for anybody in fandom is Rogue One. And plenty of people yep. <clears throat> didn't like Rogue One for whatever reason. I did. I thought it was pr pretty decent. Um, but he wasn't the best part of that. He wasn't the most compelling character in, in Rogue One by any stretch. They gave him like literally nothing to do except be the would-be yeah. assassin for the main character's father. And that was it. Not enough. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I understand why people skipped out on Andor. But I mean, you'd think that with the, the Mandalorian being the alleged crown jewel in disney star wars a uh, disney plus star wars collection you'd think john and dave just would have brought a, a better kind of a game and dude they're the only two writers on this episode i like i went back and i looked at the credits like if i if we check this on imdb it'll only say them but overall <clears throat> compared to the other episodes this has been one of the better ones oh as an overall comparison i mean we're talking about the cream of the crap but it's still overall it is probably one of the better episodes of this season okay and 
and mostly because of the, re the return of Moff Gideon. Okay, Missy, I'm glad you said that because I was just about to completely go apoplectic and be like, why? Why was it better? The dialogue, as we've acknowledged, is awful week to week, very clunky. Again, in this show, I haven't done this yet. I'm going to do my anti um, Femme DeLorean rant here. If this show is Bo Katan's show, then why isn't just why why do they not just cut Din and Baby Yoda out of this show? Just release the Bo Katan show we know they want to do and call it that. I would have watched that. I don't dislike the character. I dislike the the railroading of a title character under the false pretense that it's called the Mandalorian, so it could be anybody with Mandalorian blood. I'm like, dude, he's in the logo. He's the outline of the letter A. Stop. Full stop. It's it's his show, but it's not this year. So, I mean, they could have done this whole... And it hasn't been since the middle of second season. It's been the tie-in episode. It's the right, tie-in right. series. Fair. And this one, I mean, they're fair. trying to tie so many loose ends together that yep. it's not even holding the story anymore. When you're holding the whole thing up on your shoulders, eventually yep. Atlas falls. Yep, yep. And well, that's you got, you got what we're seeing. I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's, it's like you said, though. I mean, it's, it's if we go all the way back to season two... At least in season two, as they start to thread in Ahsoka, Bo Katan, the mention of I, did Boba they Fett. mention Thrawn in that? I think uh, Bo Boba Fett. That's I'm sorry, it was Boba Fett. They didn't they mention, did mention Thrawn, Thrawn yet. Thrawn. In season two, did they? Okay, but whatever. Yeah. So they, they four things Mostly, anyway. When they were fighting the that one, she was the leader of the town. Like she was the imperial oh, yes. leader of that one yes. town, and Ahsoka was yes. fighting her. And she it was, was like, it was Tell Ahsoka's episode, Thrawn. right? Yes, yes, it was Ahsoka's episode. Perfect. So I mean, we've got and and, and you know they had the um. There was supposed to be the integration of the the never to be uh, Gina Carano series with the Rangers of the New Republic. There was mentions mm -hmm. in there with the um, the starship captain that we saw a couple of weeks ago in that in that episode. There, so I mean, it's so like you said, they threaded a lot of things. But at least at the end of the day in that show, Din's plot line, his his through line, was finished off. He successfully completed his mission with the help of his friends to get Baby Yoda to a Jedi. He did that, so it was a, it, it's a successful story for all its ups and downs in a couple of episodes that people didn't like, and whatever your feelings are on Deep Fake Luke Skywalker, it's a logical end <clears throat> to the Mandalorian, to Din Djarin's story. It was a little underwhelming that we didn't get more about what happened to him, um, you know, when his when the uh, battle droids killed his family or whatever. We don't really learn who taught him anything how he came up. He didn't do enough bounty hunting in season two for my liking, but at least the story was contained. This season has not needed him at all for not one episode, not one. We could have removed him completely from this year. We could have removed baby Yoda completely from this year with, by having had him end season two, either losing the dark saber to Bo-Katan or him just gifting it to her like, like he did this year. And then just this entire year, wipe the banner out and just call it Bo-Katan or call it the Night Owls. Because it could have just opened with her on her throne, all bummed that her fleet left, and then whatever plot device you need to kick up to have her either see the Mythosaur at whatever point or come into contact with somebody else that did and then she walks the path to find her faith. That's a compelling show. Tell me you wouldn't want to see that show. Bo-Katan finding her faith in real time and then putting the fleet back together, taking the Darksaber and fucking up Moff Gideon's remnants, whatever. Yeah, but there's the, something to the it. Re the reason why they keep in Din in, and it's the same reason why R2 and C3PO yeah. was in the original trilogy, and it's the reason yep. why Anakin and Kenobi was in the first three, and yep. why Finn was in the third, the uh, third one. It's through their point of view, and it's through Din's point of view. <sighs> yeah, I mean. I mean, I get that as a, as a necessary framing device, but it, it's, I, I, I don't have a great rebuttal for that, but I feel like in my gut that it didn't need to be, I understand the why I do, but I really, I think that Star Wars has enough cross, pro, uh, cross franchise appeal that because Bo-Katan's not a new character, the same way Ahsoka's not a new character, enough fans would have been on board to generate hype for her spinoff show that it wouldn't have needed a, a connecting thread beyond like if we, we we get Ahsoka in and then she mentions Anakin related stuff and then they have a deep fake Luke Skywalker 
appear. And so she has flashbacks to Hayden Christensen. That's a better use of a flashback to fucking Hayden Christensen as Vader than, than smashing him into a Kenobi episode four times and having it mean nothing and then having them have an extra saber, extra pair of saber duels that destroy, you know, when last I, when last we met, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Like, how is that? Ahsoka with, with Hayden? is a better fit than Anakin with Hayden as it, uh, Anakin with Kenobi as is. I mean, there were other ways they could have framed it. I'm rambling on that point, and I apologize. But I feel like just, I, I, I'm tired of these things tying in, like you said, because it puts undue pressure on whatever the central project was to have to support the weight of all these possible entry points to other stories, you know? Uh, other takeaways this week from you. What, what else did you like or dislike? I'm pretty open on this one here, because I think I have bitched enough through the 30 40 minutes we've talked about this episode we'll do some some wrap-up summaries after the star wars celebration talk uh, was there anything else in particular here you, know, you want to throw a prediction at me for next week since there's only one more i thought there were two more so i mean i'm this will be interesting next week will be the um the showdown it has to be i mean they yep. wrote it up but the thing is we have given the disney celebration to actually talk about what this might set up to all right, well, hold that thought then, because I'm going to say this about next week. So next week then is is the total obliteration of Din's character, because he now has to be the Manzel in distress that Bo-Katan comes to rescue. So if you want to talk about just completely, and if you want to talk about just completely obliterating, like kind what what started off as a kind of a, a badass male figure, bounty hunter turned father figure which was pretty good stuff. Like he put his body on the line to protect his surrogate kid. That was all very, very moving, very effective. Like it all worked through two seasons. Now he's just the guy that because of plot armor and other stupid reasons, he got caught at the, he got caught at the, um, the spear point of the assault. So when the blast door went down, the other Mandalorians with him, their Beskar wasn't as good as his. So they all died to the blaster fire and um, his flamethrower wasn't good enough to cut through the lines that they cinched him up with and he got captured without much of a yeah yeah he turned at so, least man, two or three down with that the, the flame you saw one dude, catch a, on fire dude, dude it's a flamethrower they all should have been fucking roasted they, they should have been eight dudes on jetpacks out of reach shooting him you know just beating him down with like sustained fire or something it was just dumb but anyways let's uh let's talk star wars celebration stuff what do you know what, what are you up to speed on so what I what I saw was that they announced three three movies, yep. uh, past, mm -hmm. present, and future as they're referring mm -hmm. it to. So mm -hmm. you have one that's twenty five hundred years thousand before thousand yeah, twenty five thousand yep yeah, <clears throat> before the events of the Skywalker saga. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's going to be called uh, Dawn Dawn of the Jedi. Yep, it's supposed to be the very first Jedi. And how they came about and how they learned how to manipulate the force or something like that. The first Jedi will 100% be a female. <laughs> Mark then, it down. It's going Doctor Who timeless children. You heard it here first. <laughs> then. <laughs> then we go into the present, which is the wrap up, which yeah. by the present they mean the Mandalorian timeline and all yep. the branching off series. The Disney verse, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, where they'll bring in. <clears throat> The, the conclusion of the man uh, Mandalorian. The conclusion yep. of the Mandalorian will be in that movie. So I believe season three will be the last season yep. of the Mandalorian. And the last episode will <clears throat> set up the movie. Interesting. They didn't that they didn't release a title for it, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to wrap up the whole Thrawn, the remnants of the Empire, and how the remnants of the Empire then become the new order. Okay. And then you go into <clears throat> the future, 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. Rise, rise of Palpatine. Of Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said the thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not scripted, completely authentic. We all knew it. <laughs> Nicely done, dude. Nicely done. Oh, God, dude. So, yeah, the 15 years later, because I think we laughed over... Yeah, the little bit yeah. of explanation that you got out. It's 15 years after the, the after Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, Daisy's <clears throat> focusing on to to, rep to reprise her role as um, Rey <sighs> in the New Jedi Order, which yeah. we all know Luke started a long, yeah. long time ago. 
in well, and a, Jedi Tempo far, far away on Yavin yeah. 4. Yeah. But unfortunately, in the sequel trilogy, he took a stab at that one summer and it didn't work. And then he tried to kill his nephew and it all burned down. And then he cucked himself onto an island far, far away. All right. Yeah. Let me and ask of you course, this. We have the yeah. Ahsoka, uh, the Ahsoka series would probably tie into that movie too. It will. Uh, everything, long. everything, Dis everything Disney verse live action is supposed to have probably besides Andor because that's too far in in, in the bat in the reverse. But Boba Fett, yeah. um, Boba Fett, uh, this one Mandalorian and, and Ahsoka are supposed to be the three, and then the three uh, projects. Kenobi. Well, Kenobi's a pr is that might be a little too far in the back to get wrapped into yeah. that because that was a, that's it because because uh, it's between episodes three and four movie that's wise true. so for the same reason i don't think andor being between also three andor and between four. that same timeline right 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 they're kind of like they almost run kind of parallel mm. <coughs> but me. they did have the kenobi emblem in there with did the, they oh the, then the then, then i mean yeah. then then dude, if it's there it's there um you're forgetting two other projects i don't know if they mentioned them there but it's all it's worth just noting them here for just to keep everything in the same place. Um, did they mention the Acolyte? Because that's they also still on the books. Allegedly in the can, despite some very questionable accounting practices that I'm still hearing rumors about elsewhere on YouTube about when and when they did and did not report certain things indicating money may have changed pockets within Disney. Um, hmm. And the Taika Waititi movie. So allegedly that's still, that's still a thing. The... Um, the Kevin Feige movie, uh, Kathleen Kennedy recently quoted in, I think it was Puck Magazine online, as that was never a thing, except Kevin Feige's made statements and other people in know have made statements that completely disregard that that assessment that there, there was, in fact, uh, you know, green lighting and some work done on that. So that project's not a thing. Obviously, the Ryan Johnson trilogy, not a thing. A lot, lots of things are not a thing. And, and, and in the spirit of saying that, do you believe any of these movies are getting made? And I don't care if Daisy Ridley showed up. You give her 10 grand, she'll show up anywhere. I don't think they're making these. I think <clears throat> they will make at least the present one to tie everything okay. together. That makes the most logical sense. One, because if you do the first Jedi, I mean, what are you really going to do with it? Unless you're going to make three movies about the beginning of it all. Yep. Or if you're going to do <clears throat> Jedi Order, like... What are you gonna do with it? Because the books don't exist. Remember, the books don't Ghost exist. Hero. So, nope. so almost, now, see, we're, we're making this all from scratch. Like no one even well, thought well, of it. Who's George well, Lucas? We're, we're firing from the hip as we go. Honestly, um, did you? Now I know you. Now you're you're our you're our tech and craft guy. Did you hear who the directors were for these three movies? They have not named directors. They have named directors. I'm here to tell they you. They have. They have, and you'll enjoy this. Director for the Dawn of the Jedi movie <clears throat> is none other than of Logan fame and Indy 5 fame, James Mangold. That's a fact. So he's on allegedly attached to that project. Whether it he's ever a, materializes, who knows? He's a, right? he's a Disney director. He's, like, he's, he, he's, 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 a, he's a company guy. Right, exactly. Right? The director for the present movie is Dave Filoni himself. Okay. okay. Lends it a little bit of weight. Now, the director for the future movie, episode 10, or whichever they're going to call it, and I'm going to butcher her name, and I apologize. The la It's a hyphenated last name. I believe it's Obeyed Chinoy. It might be Shahid Obeyed Chinoy, something like that. I'll, well, maybe I'll get it in the comments section here. I'll, I'll add it in there. I'll look it up and do her, do her name proper justice. Um, she is a relative unknown with history, doing documentary kind of stuff who is a noted political activist and fits a lot of Disney's political talking points. Um, yeah. So I'm guessing of the three, that's probably the one that has the most chance of changing directors, if anything, um, as they get closer to it. But I think I like your points for why the Filoni thing is likely, but here's why I think the Ray one is likely even though I hate it and I don't want it to be with every fiber of my being. Like you said, they have so much money tied up in this sequel trilogy garbage. Not just in the films, but in the parks. They've got that stupid Galaxy's Edge hotel that they can't book. That cost them, you know, $3 trillion to build. They've got an entire, you know, sub park down there that I'm hearing is typically the easiest one to move through and get around in because it's never booked, never busy. 
And I think that a movie set in that time frame allows them to do tie-ins. Like they can name things in the movie that are in the park now and have them exist in a way that had they made the actual park based on their original plans for Tatooine, Hoth, and Endor instead of three fake planets from the sequel trilogy that literally nobody cares about. This gives them an opportunity to kind of retcon the park without having to like change anything because they can just make a movie that justifies it all existing. But dude, I don't want to see the only one of these three I'm interested that I would be interested in seeing would be the Mangold one. Cause I, I think I'm good with the Skywalker story as is. I think every time somebody takes a kick at the can, they make it worse. They water it down. They make it, it's not inspiring. It's not magical anymore. Dude, I just want over the weekend. I just watched empire um, with one of my younger brothers at my parents' house over Easter. Dude, we, we sat there dude, like we had to st- nobody would leave until the X-Wing part in the swamp with Yoda. Like we caught the movie mm-hmm. just after the Hoth battle and we we're like, no, dude, we have to stay until he brings up the ship. Like you need to see it, you know, there's nothing in the sequel trilogy that would compel me to keep my ass on that couch after eating four pounds of ham. That's not a thing, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, if, if they, if they get a good writer that wants to explore origin of the force stuff, not cram it with a whole lot of politics. It could be interesting to see how that how that comes to be. I'm least interested in the Ray movie. Like, imagine tripling down on like one of the least popular characters in the franchise. Like, honestly, like, is there nobody at the wheel over there? Like, is really? I'd rather see a Poe series than a Ray series. Oh, dude, dude, yes, Ro- Ro- Rogue Squadron, current day sequel trilogy, yeah. Rogue Squadron. Yep. Don't let Patty Jenkins do it because I heard that the the drafts she handed in for that movie were terrible, but dude, why not? Dude, if they make another movie and it doesn't involve Finn getting the, the stormtrooper to, to Jedi line that everybody literally begged for early on and had millions of fan videos and Reddit threads trying to figure out and piece together, like how that all changed from episode seven to eight, like give us that like Disney, give us that movie. Do that now. Dude, call... Uh, w- uh, what's the actor's name that played Finn? I can't remember it off the top of my head. I feel bad. Oh, dude, I, it's always... I, uh, yeah. Oh, God, that pisses me off that I can't remember dude's name. Oh, uh, John Boyega. Okay? Call him. Get the Brinks truck. Give him that story and do it now. You can even bring the girl that he hooked up with, didn't hook up with, from episode nine. Rose. Lando's daughter. Do- Lando's... No, no, not Rose. Lando's Lando's fake daughter oh, from episode nine. Yeah, the other daughter, stormtrooper yeah. that, that went rogue. Yeah. Dude, you could base an entire thing on that, and it would be more interesting than anything about 15 years later Ray. And have you seen the have you seen the fake picture of her? Uh, it's it's pregnant Ray from episode nine. Mm-hmm. Like the theory is that it's like it was cut footage um, from episode nine after she did the healing thing on Kylo Ren, but he died. That he might have forced ghost impregnated her. You know, talk about your Me Too bullshit, but like so again we're, we're taking the anakin story like we're taking the, the the uniqueness the magic of the whole immaculate conception you know shmi uh, shmi um skywalker was impregnated literally by the living force by god and produced anakin we're gonna go back to that effing drawing board for ray where of course she'll have twins any guess who the, uh, any guesses <laughs> it'll show a boy and a girl the girl will be great and the boy will be the bad guy i mean it writes itself it writes itself you do know in the New Jedi Order books who turns out to be the bad guy again. Uh, Han's second son, right? Han and Leia's second son, Jason? No. Mara and and uh, Luke's second son, Anakin. Oh, 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 and, and I'm sorry, Jedi knew. I was thinking, that what's what, there's the other set where Jason Solo becomes um, Darth What's-His-Face. Oh, jeez. Dude, I'm terrible with names. I was like, I know one of their kids goes bad because his sister, because he kills one of he his, was, uh... He was, he led, kills he one was of his led by Anakin. Anakin's one who leads them that way. Oh, get out of here. Uh, and then, my, then, my, and then, I didn't then read a lot Anakin of that. Switches back the universe. to the, the light. Right. I, I did actually read that in a wiki the other day because I was looking into one of the cooler Star Wars villains that comes out around the time. Abeleth. It's a, it's a yeah. female... It's like a female primal kind of chaos figure in the force or something but she sounded really badass and i was like let me read a little bit more into her but admittedly i haven't read a lot of the uh, the eu books outside of um heir to the empire um so yeah they got a lot on their plates with uh, what they think they can do i think their time's up man i i don't each viewer each viewership set that i get 
from all of these series subsequently is lower than the last one. The Mandalorian's looking at like a 45 plus percentage point drop in viewership from the end of season two to this year. Admittedly, they took a very long break. You know, there was, it was like about 18 months, I think. That didn't help. But I think a lot of people, when you when you show up, they're like, if, they're, if you and I had tickets to go see, you know, the, the, the Lions play the Patriots and we get there and it's an MLS game or it's you know, or it's a junior high school football game, like, yeah, we'd probably still enjoy watching a, a junior high game, grab a couple of beers or something, but it's not what we paid for. It's not what we were expecting. It's not what we wanted, you know? And I would say the same thing to anybody else that wants to question that that kind of standpoint because i'm just i'm so sick of the rhetoric lately that if we don't like something it's because we hate the immutable characteristics of the people in it and I'm like dude you know what if i showed up to a fucking knitting circle and just wanted to talk mma all day long nobody would be okay with that like if i started demanding we talk about mma at a book club a book club meeting you know that focused on historical romances like it's like it sticks out it, it doesn't add up you know, and I feel like all the nonsense that we get with the pandering in these shows now is is the is sticking out and turning people away from the franchise. So even if they took a long break and lost some people, plenty of people when they come back and see the Mandalorian not headlining his own show are just gonna be like, okay, all right, I'll check. Maybe I'll check out Bo-Katan when her show comes out. Maybe I'll go back and watch Clone Wars and see if I'm into that. But a lot of people are just gonna walk away and they're not gonna they're not gonna show up. For Ahsoka. They're not going to show up for Oversaturation, too, because they're trying to beat this uh, yeah. dead horse for every penny yeah. they can get. Fact. And at th they're just trying to make... All, all they're really trying to do is just throw out their pander to the people who they believe who <clears> want to watch it, turn off the people who actually do want to watch it, and then just throw out so much junk out there just to see what sticks to the wall. Yeah. But, you know, but I, I think sooner or later, don't, don't their marketing guys just have to just re read the numbers as they are and just be like, listen... Disney Plus registration for subscribers is stagnated. It hasn't increased in a while, anything other than negligibly. It barely holds on most most month to months. And I think that as more people, as all those deals that got Disney Plus included with signing up for certain cable services or internet services or cell phone services, as those continue to drop off and people don't renew, they're not going to see re-upticks in people signing up because these shows aren't driving anybody to sign up for the service and if they do it's people show up watch it for two months and then they go because they do the week to week thing they don't they don't do the stranger things netflix content dump you know and if they did if they did do that <clears throat> they would lose subscribers quickly because oh, you'd have people oh come in God. watch it real quick and then gone drop off i'd be unsubbed by the end of the by the end of the season but to, to your point about the um the throwing everything against the wall we're already seeing the ship semi course correct itself over at Marvel with the recent announcement, a recent announcement by Feige that are like, you know, I think you mentioned this last week <clears throat> or the week before the movies coming out. We're going to try and downshift from three or four a year to two or three. We're going to hard cap the budgets for the feature films to like 175 to 200 mil um, with the shows. We're going to try and step back from three or four a year down to two. And they're going to have a hard cap of total expenditure of like a buck and a quarter million. Like they're not going to have these exorbitant things. Because I think at the end of the day, especially with some of the, the more recent Marvel shows, She-Hulk stands out in particular. Where did you spend the money? Like it was a terrible show just on a VFX level. We've and seen they that, fired Victoria Alonso. That's a tie-in. And that's what they believe. Yeah, run with it. A lot of money, yeah. a lot of money <clears throat> from her is the reason yeah. why she she did get fired because she yeah. was in charge of VFX. And yeah. they said that the VFX department felt like they were pretty much in a sweatshop getting yeah. beat. So they were but just trying to get it done, and they weren't even mm -hmm. worried about getting it done right. And she yeah. wasn't even about getting it done right. Just get it out there. Get it right. done. See, and, but I see, oh, I see overlap there between that and how we know that the last couple, not not TLJ, because for all of TLJ's flaws, at least it looked good. But with Rise of Skywalker, and I think some of these, the uh, Disney Plus shows, most of the effects suck on almost everything that they do over here. Now, and, and or exception, I thought that was very tastefully done and well done. We lived in environments, all that good stuff. For the most part, The Mandalorian looks pretty good. Space combat, I've railed and been like, yo. Sign me up for space combat. Like I'm with it. They're like you guys do that good, but some of their other projects leave a lot to be desired. Like Kenobi and like Boba Fett. They're both they're bottom barrel VFX work. And if you if you read any of the um, 
like the criticism kind of videos that the kind of where they do the, uh, the they review not they don't review but they cover like interviews with the vx uh, vfx studios and things like that they'll say exactly the things you just said where you know x executive will come in and say we need this shot this shot this effect this effect but they give no kind of guidelines they give no kind of initial notes about how they want it to look or like that so they leave it to the crew to do it up their way they animate whatever they do and then they come in for the review and they go no 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 we need you to redo that these shots cost like twenty thousand dollars a frame to do like the cgi stuff like that. i'm making the number up but you know what i mean you yeah. know like that, that that 15 second shot of the hulk's fist being like you know punching the space thing in avengers was probably a three million dollar shot you know like these things aren't cheap so so a, a quick mm. insight into vfx Shoots. yeah the holt's eyebrow just to do the eyebrow is three people Dude, that's, this is what i'm saying who are all making whatever rate they make through their trade union you know what i mean and it's like and it costs like it's, it's not a joke yeah i met the guy i uh him and his wife worked on a lot of, of these big budget films he was my mm -hmm. python instructor when i was going through hacking school true, true. and uh he was telling us a lot about <clears throat> it like he uh, they had a nasa engineer they're going over how the airflow would be and we're going to go back to i believe it was episode two where kenobi kills grievous is that where kenobi kills no grievous uh, was that was three two? three 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 that was in three mm -hmm. okay so when he fell down and he has tape kind of furled out yep. they did everything with the fake air and like this is what it would look like and george Lewis looked looked at him he was like that looks like crap make it flare out he's like but that's yeah. not how it's at how it actually would be he goes i don't care how what it would look like accurately i need it to look yeah. good dramatic right yeah. mm -hmm. i mean but see that's at least that's a question of of getting verisimilitude like authenticity and accuracy versus an artistic vision and in the end the artistic vision won out there and it, and, it, and it was fine we don't there is no artistic vision and that's the complaint from the studio houses now is that they're just told hey we need this blaster shootout. We need eight Mandalorians drop shipping in. And then they don't like how it looks. So they go back and they reshoot these things into oblivion. So now you've got eight episodes of a show whose total budget is, you know, 150 million or whatever it is. And you don't see where any of the work went because each next draft of the effect looks not as good because they had not as much time to do it. And then it's something still has to be shot and, and printed and, and sent out for distribution. So I mean, that's, and I think, did you notice any of that in this episode with the jetpacks? Because I actually forgot to mention that. I thought some of the initial jetpack work was kind of, kind of shoddy when the, um, the new death troopers kind of came into the cave. I was like, I can almost, I, I couldn't see obviously any guide wires or anything, but I'm like, it just looked a little jank. It looked like a stuttering, like cutscene in a video game to me a little bit. And I don't remember that being an issue before. Maybe it's just because we're seeing too much jetpacks now. So it's not as cool overall. I don't know. The, I think the good one was when they were fighting on the land boat. The, the, where, the, uh, yeah, the one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, yeah, that was good. Because um, it's short bursts it, of, like, Superman punch and a couple of moves and not hovering in and gunning shit down for, for 10 seconds, you know? Yeah. It was short bursts and how Jetpack should be. Right, uh, right, because we know they have no fuel. Because <laughs> he'd run out of yeah. gas in three puffs. You got a funny joke about that, but... Um, hey. <coughs> <clears throat> with them coming in i think it was mostly particle effects like those weren't actual people those were oh, all okay. cgi until it got into the close combat but the other thing i wanted to point out was yeah. during the fight on the land ship between them you saw the different styles between the two clans as well one was more ground based like oh yeah, like yeah. overpower and the other ones well, like because he was a high tank. flying right yeah it was like watching a cruiserweight versus Brock, uh, Braun Strowman, like right. that type of that type of match. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, and, and again, looks cool, but then it's unfortunately my duty to pull it back to the stupid. It gets stupid when you consider that these dudes are that that the one guy is treating head punches to a dude wearing a helmet, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I mean, good luck with that. Like they're they're trading body shots into like abdominal armor <laughs> like that that fight needed to be they're trading slashes with the vibro blade that way you can see the gouges in in, in the um in like the pauldron in the armor 
that if you get if you poke somebody in the ribs with a vibro blade like how we saw at the end with, with paz i mean those essentially the the weapons the praetorians used were like enhanced uh vibro blades like grievous's shock troops had in the in sith like his guards had them that kenobi and um, anakin had to deal uh, had to duel with those weapons are effective against beskar they didn't have to find the weak spots in certain places. But blasters, as we know, are completely useless. That duel on the land ship, they should have been trading a little minor pokes here and there, gouge the face mask, leave a scar kind of thing. But dude, punching body on, I don't know. I invite anybody to come by if they want to take a shot at me wearing like a motorcycle helmet. Let me know how your hand works out. I know a really good ER. That's all I'm saying. You know, like they're so, not superheroes. So it's, so it's stupid know. to trade shots like that. So do you know why Shinobi always wanted a jetpack? Because it's cool. Because you'd have permanent high ground. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Hello there. I have oh, the that was high a terrible. Ground. It's over. I have. Oh, dude, it's. Dude, you know what though? Frankly, I'm disappointed you said that, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like there's a one in an eight trillion shot that some dickhead at Lucasfilms is gonna watch this. One in eight trillion. Right, and he's gonna get that line down. He's gonna get that idea down to somebody for a Kenobi season two. Like, hey, this dude on YouTube said Kenobi should have a jetpack so he could say the thing, and then somebody else is like, oh, he said the thing. It's like, no, no. I, I want royalties if they do. Dude, he, I want, I want a nickel. Dude, this is my show. I want a nickel every time you get a quarter for saying it. Dude, but it's just, but dude, tell me that's not the. We've been going crazy long, but like seriously, tell me that's just not the sad state of Star Wars. It's like everything they do looks cool for about 10 seconds and you're like oh yeah dude paz got the glowing mini gun and he's just laying it down and high scores and he's gunning like well, yeah dude but i mean like he didn't mention his kid like he could have been like you know tell james i love him kind of thing i'm doing this for him slam the door shut and then bo katan's like pounding on the fucking door like no because they can't get through and she can't get through and paz does his thing and he dies up against the wall and the praetorian blade comes through him i mean dude there's cooler shit they could do that has an impact but it's like no they they went this far when they could have gone that far and it's like it's, it's not enough dude that scene reminds me of another dumbass thing right so bo katan and moff gideon are somehow communicating through a three foot thick blast door that has reinforced glass that nobody can shoot through she's got her helmet on he's got his helmet off so it's not like a radio frequency between the helmets or anything it's just so fucking stupid like you can't hear him he could have been talking about your mama you couldn't have heard it you know but they but they do stuff like that i will say this though because i don't want to i don't want to get too far i don't want to go on too much longer on this one episode because dude it's I, i'm so glad it's over um i did like gideon's armor i like that the, the helmet had kind of crown like prongs at the top yeah. of it, I thought that was pretty dope looking. Reminded me slightly of the Witch King from Lord of the Rings, you know, from Fellowship, from Return of the King. She like that. So it had a good vibe to it. I like his Iron Man getup. It's kind of cool. He put in a good performance with it. It was cool to see him in the jetpack. Um, <clears throat> One more. So you know, I'll give him that for visual. Say again. One when the ship came out of the Ion Storm, when she had the wounded on there, and she saw the fleet. Yeah. The fleet should have been under attack. But that's what I mean. Like, again, it, it's like a continuity thing with time. Like, there's no way she doesn't get back. I mean, there's no way she gets back. Because how did he not just be like, let's scramble. Or like, we're here now. We have the element of surprise. Scramble the ties. And then they mm -hmm. go and gun down that one garbage ship that she's flying. And it's like, why was she the one to fly them back? You mean to tell me the armorer wouldn't have wanted to be there to see the Great Forge? Really? Because it's stupid plot armor. They couldn't have her be in the vanguard that got killed, you know, alongside Din. And to have her there and not do anything would have been done. Like, I don't, I, I don't get why she was the one to bring them back. Unless, and we didn't even talk about this, dude. So now we have to do it real quick. So the, the title of the episode is The Spies. Were the spies the guys on the land ship because they drove them right to Moff Gideon's hidden base at the Great Forge at, at the heart of Mandalore? Were they spies? Who's the spy? The chick at the beginning that reported to Moff Gideon for three seconds? They named the whole episode after her? Is the armorer a spy? Like, I don't know. Am I a spy? Is it you? Who is it? It was never mentioned, dude. It was a loop never tightened. But I don't think any of the dudes from the beginning at the land ship were any of the Mandalorians killed during the escape. Because I feel like they would have focused on that if one of them went down. <clears throat> I do have one solid for the entire se series. 
<laughs> dude, the, lay it on me, dude, because I'm tired now. For, I'm tired of this show. The concept art during the rolling credits at the end. Dude, awesome. On point. Always, awesome. Storyboard's always good. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that's probably concept a good place art, to end it then. And that's been... And that's been <laughs> three, seasons. Hype, for, for, three seasons. Three seasons. Three seasons. rolling yep. credit concept yep. art at the end with the credits is yep. you need to keep doing that that is dude, awesome I, dude, I, like I, I, I would like to see that from every star wars show if they don't do i don't i don't think they do it i don't think andor didn't do that right no yeah i think this is a man that it's a mandalorian it. that does it yep i mean i mean people have people now are trained to stick around for the post credit scenes through like marvel movies and things like that because typically they're fun they usually set up obviously like the next bigger thing i mean they did back in the day when marvel wasn't bad and it was always you had to see it because people were like oh shit this is coming Mandalorian has the next coolest thing I've seen. Like when when the credits are rolling besides the the stinger scene. This is good stuff cuz it's always the concept art always comes through in the show, but sometimes it's not as good in the show as obviously cuz you can draw anything but pro but animating and doing CG for like images like that can be tough and expensive whatever yep, yep. sometimes I, and I can't name any specifically because it's been like three seasons but some of those concept pieces especially if it's got like the um, if it's any of the, the, the giant creature kind of things if it's like a creature not even the giant ones some of the smaller ones whenever it's them I'm like oh that would have been cool oh that would have been really cool oh that ship looks pretty cool oh we got an okay one because I think they had one at the beginning of the year for the uh, the pirate king guy they look pretty dope they looked okay but we got discount swamp thing and you know he he sucks because that that went nowhere counted for nothing nowhere but um dude any final thoughts on this week that you want to vent out or are we good here and i appreciate you dropping by for the extended version for a, an episode finally of a proper episode length so you know yay us for that yay we need to do a short <laughs> yeah, one for you <laughs> no, my final thought is just happy to be back. It was a fun week uh, away while I was working at the Masters, as nice. I called the winner. Day one, called nice. the winner. Mostly because I drove his car, and that's the only uh-huh. reason he won. I'm just letting mm-hmm. you know. That's the reason Fair he won is because, not that he's the third uh-huh. best golfer in the world. In the world. Because I yep. drove his car. <laughs> facts. Facts, facts. <laughs> now he's the number one golfer in the world after his win <clears throat> at the Masters. So, nice, nice. Shout out to John Rahm. Great, uh, great job here <laughs> in Augusta. Uh, but yeah, it's good to be back. Good to do some long form <clears throat> stuff. As we are trying to try some new format stuff, maybe a couple shorts, a couple a uh, sh- lot shorter things like five, ten minute type things, as well as we go into some other different type of long form stuff. Uh, any suggestions? Throw them in the bottom. We're, we're open to suggestions. We're willing to do some stuff. I'm kind of excited about a few of these. Um, when you're driving a lot, like I was doing, you come up with good ideas, you shoot them across, and then you got to make them happen. And okay. that's what we're trying to do is make it happen. And we're going to try to grow this channel. We're going to try to give you the best content we can. And if you've been this long, I mean, we're it's like, been long. <laughs> wait, it's like an hour and 12 minutes, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Minus what we're doing cut out. <laughs> which, um, which isn't which isn't much at the beginning, I don't think. So that's legit an hour show this week. We're back on that Andor yeah. style. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss what we're putting out. Hit Give us the thumbs up because that helps the channel. Helps us get out to other people who might enjoy our type of content. Also, uh, leave comments. Hop in the community. Become part of uh, what we're trying to build here. Uh, We'll probably have some more polls coming up in the community chat. Uh, So just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, just... uh, Community chat. Yeah, stay in that uh, community <clears throat> section. We're trying to build a community. We're trying to build a show. And we want you guys there with us. You've been there since the ground level, a lot of you. We're up over 100 uh, subscribers, which is really exciting. And, Thank you, everybody, uh, I for that. appreciate <laughs> uh, each and every one of you. I know you don't have to, and we really appreciate that you do. All right. So I think that should wrap it up uh, for good, me good. on this one. Good. Nicely done and well said. And, and to just to double down on King Z's points there. Definitely appreciate all the um, all the subage and, and people checking in and see what we got to do. We love to keep you company while you're at work. Um, if the language utilized on the show lends it to be a not safe for work situation and you'd like to see us clean it up, it's mostly a me thing, I know. Sometimes they just slip out and from Boston, that's what happens up here. But I'm happy to clean it up so we can keep it safe for work and to get you listen on. We'd love to hear if you're listening while driving. King Z and I have both done jobs requiring us to do our fair share of driving around. Get some long days in the car, and maybe you're just sick of hearing that song on the radio for the 15th time. 
are sick of hearing sports radio bitch and complain about your, your hometown team, and you want to hear a couple of guys bitch about Star Wars and other stuff, we're not always going to do bitching here. We're going to throw in some, uh, we're definitely looking at that horror content, other movie related content. We have a couple of nifty um, bracketology ideas, we'll call them. That we're probably going to lay out starting probably in the next summer after I come in the next summer, this summer after I come back from vacation <laughs> at the end of this month. Yeah, we're, we're going to do this you next child year. Guys. We'll of winter. Year. Right there, there it is. I thought that'd be dope. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I, that's King Z over there in the blue shirt. I'm Winter Wolf. I'm wearing a Venom t shirt today. It's pretty cool. I picked this up the other day. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.